actually started to train with some of the artists and directors and founders of Cirque du Soleil, which again was starting to fulfill a childhood dream of mine. I was even being considered for a role in their new show in Las Vegas. I also developed a bit of a cocaine problem and uh, started to develop a bit of a reputation and was considered a liability. I really blew that chance. Smoked it too. Uh, <laughs> but I think we can all agree, if you've ever seen Cirque du Soleil, you're a lot better when you're high. Just <laughs> 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 not when they're high. So I, <laughs> <laughs> I continued to do drugs recreationally and then uh, professionally. Uh, <laughs> I'm not saying I did a lot of blow, but this was my coke straw. <laughs> I would have turned out a free trip to Disney World because of their policy of no cutting lines. I'm just. <laughs> I had 
12 years clean, but then I turned 13. <laughs> I think the only time I just said no is when I misunderstood the question. <laughs> I can't get high anymore, and I can't get clean. It's like the crackhead conundrum. You're probably wondering what my rock bottom was. I'll tell you what my rock bottom should have been. When I gave my ex-girlfriend a hug, and she said, is that a roll of quarters in your pocket? Are you just happy to see me? I was like, no, that's a crack pipe in the pouch of my job strap. <laughs> Don't go. But you got a roll of quarters? Should have been my rock bottom. Right. Wasn't even when I got arrested with a crack pipe in my jockstrap, was charged with possession with intent to manufacture and distribute, and was facing 40 years. Now, I knew I hit rock bottom, and the crack rock I swallowed when I got arrested came out of my bottom, and I thought about smoking it. Oh. I'm kidding. <laughs> Smoke that shit. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. It was the best shit I ever smoked. <laughs> Don't worry, everything worked out good. Uh, you wanted to hear about my rock bottom. <laughs> so my first year, I think the only step I worked uh, was step 11, meditation, and step 13, sex with the newcomer, in my case, masturbation. Uh, my first thought when I got arrested was, you can drink in rehabs, right? <laughs> My rehab was binge watching celebrity relapse on Netflix. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it could have been me. <laughs> like, serious trust issues back then. And the only person I kind of sort of trusted was like, you need to go to meetings. And I was like, well, I can't have anybody see me there. Like, and I'm not going to say anything. She said, honey, there's a half page publicity picture you in the paper <laughs> talking about your broken little crack pipe in your underpants. <laughs> There are no secrets anymore. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> I found out that. Um, and also, there is such a thing as bad publicity. <laughs> My first meeting, I don't really remember much. It was actually an AA meeting, and it was very dry. That's very dry. <laughs> but no, someone came up to me after the meeting, they're like, man, before I got sober, I was, you know, a flaming asshole. But now I go to the meetings, I work the steps, I got a sponsor. Now, I'm just an asshole. <laughs> it felt so good to laugh, you know, especially after white knuckling it for 10 days and crying to Dr. Frickin' Drew. The orphan kick, yeah. So I don't know if comedy uh, saved my life, but it definitely saved my sanity. My second year now, and uh, first time I can look at myself in a mirror, it doesn't have a line of blow on it. So making progress. Before I got recovery, dating was pretty hard. But now, <coughs> dating is impossible. <laughs> I went on my first blind date in my second year, and she's already at the bar. I order her coffee and uh, scoop some sugar into my spoon, immediately pull out a lighter and stick to me. Not going well. She's like, so you don't drink? And I'm like, nope, I don't drink. Really? Not even like sometimes I'm like, ah, I was, no, no. I'm just like, what would happen if you had my drink? I said, well, imagine you wake up in a crap apartment and you can't find your car keys. There's a Coleman lantern on the floor next to seven empty cheapo lighters and empty box of birthday candles. There's a luggage full of a trash bag full of smoke next to the couch. And there is a toilet paper roll stuffed with bounty fabric softener stuffed into a wool sock. And someone's peering out of the Myriad of trash bags covering the window, like a scared cat with OCD. She said, that would happen to you if you had one drink? I said, no. That would happen to you if I had one drink. <laughs> well, that went well. My friends are like, dang, you gotta get a wingman. I'm like, I can cock block myself. <laughs> I'm still addicted to cigarettes. Uh, I would have cut back to just like snorting three a day. So that's good. Uh. <laughs> I've been working on meditation. They say it's knowing without thinking, pure consciousness without objectification. 
or as I like to call it, procrastination with purpose. <laughs> I don't think I have ADD as much as I have a distraction surplus. <laughs> I'll be like, um, um, my brain will be like, um, I bet I could down a hummingbird with my mandula oblongata. <laughs> what? I have chronic negative thinking. So basically, if you end a sentence with my name, I assume you're calling me a dick. <laughs> I try not to go on my phone before I meditate, because that's just like peeing in your snowsuit if you do it. You want that soak in. Uh, and I'll be like, oh, oh my god, I wonder if I get more likes in my profile picture. Come on, focus, focus. I am proud to say that uh, <clears throat> this is the only whip I keep in my jock strap these days. <laughs> Excuse me, the only crack I keep in my jock strap. I thought I was going to whip something else out, I got distracted. <laughs> The idea is, if I really want a cigarette, I've got to put it out with this. Would you guys like to see me try? Yes. yes. Well, we're all here. We're not all there. <laughs> On the count of three, ready? One, One two, two, three. three. Ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Forgot to mention, I'm going to wear a blindfold as well. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 